Alright, I think this video is long overdue. I've played Risk of Rain 2 a lot recently, and I've spent most of my time playing Huntress, and I'm here to explain to you too how to play Huntress. This is the Huntress full slash not full guide. So first, let's explain abilities. You can shoot your M1 while sprinting, and in a game where everything wants to kill you, it's pretty good for dodges. Next, you've got the M2, which is pretty straightforward, literally, since you don't have to aim it, just like your M1. This can ricochet to up to times, dealing extra damage, so that's cool. The shift is just a dash, but this is what differentiates a bad from a good Huntress player. Your ability to dodge with this ability is what makes you a good Huntress player. Last but not least, you've got the R, the Ballista. A short dash back, and then you can fire three shots, dealing an absurd amount of damage, and that's your main ability with Huntress for dealing with single enemies. And there are no other abilities in Huntress's kit. None. Now, how do you play Huntress? Because it's all well and good to state the obvious in the numbers, but what about gameplay? Well, Huntress is the most dynamic long-range damage dealer in Risk of Rain 2. You always have to be in movement with Huntress. Your low health, along with your poor defensive stats, make for a character that is a glass cannon. Meaning you hit hard, but you go down if they sneeze in your direction and hit you. Bruh. This is when your two dashes come in. Yes, two dashes. There's your directed dash with shift, the big dash that is actually used for everything, and then you've got another dash. That's right, you've got one in your R as well. This very short dash is useful for a bunch of reasons. Number one. You can use it to try and dodge some damage from Wisps, especially useful when you're playing on glass and in the early game any damage from Wisps can kill you. Number two, you can cancel fall damage with that ability. If you've got Frailty on or are playing on Eclipse, this is also pretty useful to avoid lethal fall damage. Number three, you can try and get above some certain small ledges thanks to this ability, although your shift is much better at it of course, but if you don't have it up and don't want to wait the cooldown, you can always use this. Now, this isn't foolproof, and you can fail it a lot, but more often than not, you'll be fine and actually get the result you'd expect from it, which is an escape, and then dealing the damage of a royal capacitor. What about items? Well, this is when things get interesting. Huntress is extremely versatile. She likes almost every type of items. Move speed? Yes, for sure. She loves move speed, as her gameplay is very frenetic and needs to go fast in order to dodge around. Raw damage like Delicate Watch? Of course, who doesn't like this? What about AoE? Well, do I have an offer for you? The item is gasoline. When you kill an enemy, you deal some extra damage in a 12 meter radius that deals a good amount of base damage, and you burn your targets for extra damage over time. Alongside that, the more you get, the stronger all the effects get amplified. You want a longer reach? It gets that. You want more base damage? It gets that. You want more burn damage, it gets that. But that's not all, since the last DLC Survivors of the Void, a new item has been introduced to the game, Ignition Tank. This item quadruples the damage of every fire effect, meaning that your gasoline already dealing a great amount of damage would become absolutely absurd. If you buy me three gasoline, I will get in an Ignition Tank, Absolutely free! Disclaimer, the initial tank doubles damage duration, so that's why it says quadruple damage, although it's not exactly correct. This offer doesn't happen in the game, I just want to say things. What just happened? If you want some single target damage on top of your Ballista, ATG Missile MK1, alongside some Runald and Kiaro bands, and some sticky bombs, or maybe some bleed effects, that can always work. Speaking of bleed effects, let's talk about Shatter Spleen. This item looks like a mushroom, although it is a spleen, and what are its effects, I hear you ask? No, we're not doing that again. No, but basically, Shatter Spleen makes enemies bleed on every crit, and they explode, dealing the only percent max HP damage in the entire game, which is the greatest thing ever, and is also really, really OP. Unfortunately, Shatter Spleen only drops from the Imp Overlord boss, so you'll have a hard time to find it, but if you can get it, do so, it's worth it. Lastly, I have to talk about crits, because of course you want 100% crit on that character as quickly as possible. Non-negotiable. Oh, and healing. Go get some. Doesn't matter too much, although a barrier does. So get some Topaz Brooches, and maybe an Aegis for that yellow shield goodness. About how to play the character, just stay alive, always move, and you'll be good. You'll understand how to play the character quickly enough anyway. 
All you need to know are items, really. And hey, if you want to know about the strength of each item, I have made a tier list about all of these items. You can check it in the description or as an end card, and I'm done with the shameless self promo. With that being said, though, this guide comes to an end. If you've learned anything, good. If you didn't, good. And if you're still lost, good. My work here is done.